Hi everyone and welcome back. First of all, let me apologize for taking so long to upload this video. There are two reasons for that and first of all, a lot of work was needed for the rifle, the shield, the bazooka and the funnels. And the second reason is quite tragic, and that is during the photo shoot, the kit decided to collapse on me and I had to take some time to fix and repair it. And at that point I was getting quite frustrated and I had to spend some time repainting and I totally forgot to put a part on the shield back. So yeah, it's got a missing part for the uh, entire video. But this leads me to the stability of the kit itself. And it's quite horrific because the kit itself is about 6 kilograms in weight. And you can probably tell that it's super back heavy and left side heavy. The funnels themselves are probably a kilo in weight. And they're held on by just one connection point. And the gear mechanism they use for the joints are quite useless. They're supposed to provide like articulations for, for the joints. But at this kind of size and weight, you can't really have it being articulated and stable enough. They've also provided nuts and bolts to tighten joints, but if you tighten them too much, like the bolts will actually go through the part. Hence I used a lot of steel rods to lock the joints. But if you have the determination and patience to work on this kit, the end result is undeniably impressive. Although I did a lot of work to sort of update the proportions and designs of the kit. Things like resizing the chest and the shoulders, adding more panel line details. Because the kit is about sort of 13 years old now and it came before the fur car, so the stock design is definitely quite dated. And for some reason there are some nasty scratches on every part. My guess is because the shop that printed them didn't do a good enough cleanup job. If you didn't know, if someone wants to produce a resin kit, the easiest way nowadays is to just print everything out of a 3D printer and then they will have to sort of polish all the um, 3D printing marks off of each part before casting. So my guess is that they didn't spend a lot of time on the cleaning part. Oh yeah, and I also experimented with Fortune Mail paints in the resin making studio. And for some reason, I don't know if it's the batch or something, but the paints came out really thick, especially the white, it sort of had a pasty consistency and I need to thin it to about 1 to 6 or 1 to 8. And because it's so watered down, I needed to apply 5 to 6 layers of white, so it drastically increased the working time of this kit. So my verdict for this kit is, it's a really nice looking kit, and it's quite easy to assemble, but you need to put in a lot a lot of work to make this kit stable. So I really hope you enjoy this series. And you know I was getting quite tired and frustrated when the, uh, when the kit collapsed. And I was so close to giving up and just not finish the video. But then it would feel kind of wrong not to end the series on a high note. And also thanks to Steve, uh, Sniper1980, the guy who built this kit almost a decade ago. He gave me a lot of moral support, he was like, you need to see this to the end. So I really really appreciate if you can leave a like or leave a comment, whatever. And I'm really looking forward to make something simpler for the next project. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.